Hi, I'm Sandra. Welcome to Create in Spain. Um, I apologise if you can hear some noise in the background. One of my neighbours, I think, is doing some jet washing. Um, I can't control that, I'm afraid. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about airbrushing airbrushes. Now, I've used an airbrush for about a year and a half, I think, now, uh, for odd things. And I love it. I think it's great fun. You can get some wonderful effects. And I'm as happy as could be when I'm airbrushing. I can spend hours doing airbrushing. And uh, it's a great time waster for me if I let it. But I thought I'd show you a couple of different models of airbrush. I happen to have three. Uh, the reason I have three is because my husband gave me three for a birthday present. I think what happened was he bought me a compressor that came with one or two cheap airbrushes and then I mentioned that I wanted a different airbrush and then he got me the one that I actually asked for. So I ended up with three. But they each have their individual uses and yeah, I have my favourite most certainly. But that isn't to say that you have to spend a fortune on airbrushes because you don't. Not if it's for general craft use. Um, there's no real point in spending a fortune on one if all you're going to do is just mess around with craft items and things like that. If you're trying to do artwork with it, then yes, there's a little more point in having a more expensive one. And also, if you happen to be an engineering freak, then you might decide you want a more expensive one for the sheer beauty and quality of the engineering. Anyway, to start off with, um, you can see here I have a couple of containers of chroma colours. These are actually food colouring. And the reason I have them is because they are brilliant for airbrushing, even for artistic purposes I frequently use them but I also like to airbrush cakes sugar work and things like that so that's why I have chroma color and this airbrush here you can see is marked food use only and this is the one that I have dedicated um, just to that purpose the reason for that obviously if you're doing food items you want to make sure that nothing poisonous is going to get into your food so you do need to have one specially dedicated for that reason. Now this particular one, it's not my favourite, but it's better than one of the ones that I have. I'll explain why it's not my favourite in a minute. So this is what an airbrush looks like. This particular one has a cup to hold the paint that is side mounted. And that is why it's not one of my favourites in particular. I prefer to have a cup which is situated directly over the needle. And the reason I prefer that is because I can use less paint that way. With this, I have to have paint that goes into here and then it has to travel through here before it gets to here, before it's blown out the front. That's the main reason why I would say this is not... Not one I would choose to buy, shall we say. Not one I would choose. Other than that, it's fine. It works perfectly well. It wasn't an expensive one. Um, I said I think it came with a compressor as part of a kit. But it's fine. This bit here is the other reason why I'm not quite so keen on it. Now, you can't tell at the moment, and I'm not about to take it apart... If I, if I just pull, unscrew the wrong thing. If I just unscrew this a little bit, the bit at the back controls the lever, basically how far the lever will pull back. Now, if I were to take this apart for cleaning, there are two pieces for this lever, and one of the pieces in particular is quite tiny, and it's just a pain to put it back together. That's the other reason why I'm not so keen. But it does a job and it does it just fine. It's perfectly usable. It's just not my favourite. Okay, so that's that one. 
The other one that I have, which I have relegated to more serious DIY type projects, for example, uh, redoing the lettering on the barbecue or whatever, and use with enamel paints and things like this, is this one. And the reason I really don't like this one a great deal is because whoops, it is not gravity fed in the same way that the others are. In the you either have a paint pot which you put on to there and it goes up or you have a little bucket that goes on there and it goes up. I just prefer gravity fed because I can get away with using less paint and therefore less clean up if I don't use a lot of paint at any one time. But for larger jobs where you do need a lot of paint, this is more suitable. So it depends on what you're going to actually be using it for. Okay. Now the last one is my Iwata. Iwata? Iwata? I have no idea how you're supposed to pronounce it. But this is my high precision, high detail work, high performance plus Iwata. I love it. Uh, the engineering on this is lovely, it's well made, it's smooth, shiny, lovely. I, I just adore this one. And you notice that it has the cup directly over the needle. And although you can't see this, this mechanism here is in one piece. It doesn't take so much effort to put it back together properly. And I just love this. I've got another little valve on the bottom. This doesn't normally come with it. Um, what this does is it allows me to control the airflow without having to touch my compressor, which is underneath my desk. So it just makes it easier for me to control that. But the paint flow again is controlled by this little screw at the back. Close it up or open it up depending on how much paint you want to go through. It does make it a lot easier to clean and as I, I love it. I think it's great. Now, apart from general artwork um, and DIY purposes, cake decorating and whatever, if you're thinking of getting an airbrush, you don't know quite what you're going to do with it. I do have an idea. If you're into card making and you use stencils and things, you can stencil with an airbrush and it will give you some really good effects, some really good, neat graduations. And it's very easy. This literally took two drops of food colouring. And yes, I did use food colouring on it. Literally two drops, one of the teal and one of the pink. And all I did for this is I had a stencil. I actually applied some plain white texture paste. I got mine in a jar because it's easier to put back in the jar than it is to put back in a tube. So I decanted it. I put the stencil on top of my, as it happens, watercolour paper. I stuck my paper down. I put my stencil on top and stuck the top of the stencil down. And then I put my texture paste on, scraped off the excess and then use my airbrush to spray the colour on. And it's good fun, it's really quick, it's very, very simple. You can get great effects doing this. If you were to use something that was a lot thicker for your stencil, like craft foam or something, you could get some really thick textures on your artwork as well. Now, I think it's great fun. There are lots of different applications for this if you want to do backgrounds for cards. A lot of the time, it's quite difficult to do cards for men. Um, cards for women seem to be a lot easier. Cards for men seem to be more difficult. But if you can do pattern backgrounds and put texture in your card, it makes them a bit more interesting without necessarily making them all flowery and pretty pretty. So quite suitable for that. Uh, you could, for example, do a round stencil and use it as a background for a character or a sentiment. And if you use texture paste on it, you could make it quite thick, but you could still do a gradient color on it. So that's a really good use for it. So I hope I've given you some idea of what you can do with an airbrush. 
that perhaps you hadn't considered before. Now, the other thing that I will say about airbrushes is it's quite a good idea to have a stand. And this one clamps onto my table and then my airbrush sits in the top here. Obviously, it would be vertical, uh, but I can't show you that easily. The reason it is important to have a stand of some description, even if it's a homemade one, is that if you have to leave your airbrush with the paint inside for any reason, to answer the telephone, to answer the door, whatever, you can put your airbrush down and it's not going to put paint everywhere. Um, a very important consideration in most households. Okay, that's it. I hope you found it useful. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.